again, Henry Beyer here with Strong for Life. In this video, you'll be learning some basic body weight power drills that are the that can be considered the foundation of learning plyometrics. Plyometrics is the use of uh, body weight, leaping, jumping, etc., for the purpose of developing power. A key component of plyometrics is reducing the time that your feet are on the ground. So you might do a jump like this and then jump again. And it's that sec, it's that reduced amount of time on that second jump that you're working on with plyometrics. What we're doing here is sort of laying the foundation of jumping skills so that you can progress to doing actual plyometrics because plyometrics can be very challenging or taxing on the body. So we don't want to do a lot of them. And with that in mind, let's just talk about when you're doing this type of jumping work, how much of it you want to do a week. Ideally, you don't want to do any more than 100, what they call 100 foot contacts per week. You can train up to, you can train your jumping up to four days a week, but if you do that, you only want to have a total of 25 foot contacts per session. So, we're gonna start with the box jump, and then we're gonna do a single leg box jump, then we're gonna do a lateral bound, and we're gonna end with a single leg lateral box jump. So I have a few different items here that one might have around the house in order to do box jumps. If you go to a gym, they might have commercially produced boxes, but most people won't have that at home. They'll have a chair, a stool, maybe an old milk crate. Those are certain things that you might have around. And as long as they're stable and sturdy enough to hold your weight, those items will work fine. I'm gonna use this footstool here as a for demonstration purposes. I'll just demonstrate the box jump to begin with, and then I'll break it down for you. So that there is your basic box jump. If you go on the internet, you will find people jumping onto very high boxes, 36, 40 inches, 48 inches. And that's totally unnecessary. Even for a, you know an elite athlete, 30 inches is a box height that you would only do occasionally. Most of your training is going to be at lower heights. And so that's one key thing to remember. This footstool is maybe about 16 inches tall, but if you've never done any of this before, you might wanna start with something as low as 12 inches or even four inches high would be totally fine to learn this skill and get comfortable with the jumping. Now, we're doing a type of jump that is is you're going from a, a, a still position. So let me just demonstrate again. So I have, I bend my knees, I have my feet about hip widths apart and I'm, I'm still, I'm going from the still position. The only thing that's moving are my arms here. So my arms go from forward to back and then I land on top of the footstool. There are jumps where you preload, where you drop down into this position and then come up. But we're not doing that for these box jumps. All these box jumps are happening from a still position. The only thing that's moving again is your arms. Your arms move back and then up and you land. Here are a couple of key points to keep in mind and they will help you determine the height of the box that you want to jump on 
or eventually should be jumping on. The first is that when you land on the box, there should be no noise. There shouldn't be a hard slap on the box. It should be quiet. So that's the one thing. That's the first thing. The second thing is when I'm taking off, I'm already in this, this hinged bent knee position. So that I have a, a bend in my knees and, ank and hips that I'm using to start from. When I land on the box, my knee position, my hip and knee position should be up about the same. Roughly the same. So here, I'll demonstrate again. So here I am, and my position is roughly the same. If my hips are much lower and my knees more bent on the landing than they are on the takeoff, the box is too high. Your landing position and your starting position should look the same. So that's the box jump. And then I'll just, I'll just show you with a milk crate over here uh, that I have. This is another option. If you, if, the, if you feel that the milk crate is sturdy enough, and if you're doing this in shoes, then you could just jump on top of the milk crate totally fine with a pair of shoes. And if that's all you have, then that's great. I like doing, and I recommend that you do most of your training without shoes on. Now I have a couple of pads that I can put on top of the box here. And this makes this box about 12 inches. So it's a, it's a fair bit shorter than that. And that, it'll be an easier jump. Now, because this box is not solid and there's loose things on top of it, it's gonna make a little bit more noise. But you, want, you still wanna try and make it quiet. So you get into position like that. And then, Always step down. You don't want to jump off of that. So that's the box drill. And when you're doing box drills, the goal is to work up to about 25 foot contacts total. So that might be the only jumping that you do if you're going to do a set, five sets of five or something like that, because then you've hit 25 for your day. You've got 25 foot contacts that way. So again, with the box jumps, you, you will want to work up to that 25, 25 count, but you could start with three sets of five, move to four sets of five, something like that as a, as a progression. And in terms of doing these group of exercises that I'm showing you, you're going to want to do them for three weeks. And then, and then you can move on to the next level of plyometric jumps. Okay, that was the box jump. Now we have the single leg box jump. So I'm going to use a different box to demonstrate with. So I have, I have, a, I have, I have a box that I've made up for a different purpose, but it's going to work nicely for this. It's just a plywood box. Now, you might not have something like this, so you could do this on a, you know, a step. You can find a step that's about four inches high, and you can do this on that. With the pad, this is about five inches, I would say. And so the single leg is the same thing. You're gonna be in this bent knee position. Your hand, the only thing that's gonna move are your arms. Your arm's gonna go back, and then you're gonna jump up onto the box. I'll do the other leg like that and then you step down. For these you want to do a maximum of 15 per leg. Okay so if you if you combine um, if you combine your um, what am I trying to say? Hand up. So, I'll hand up again. Whoops, excuse me. Hand up again. Okay, so this is the single leg box jump. As it 
says, as the name indicates, you're doing it with a single leg. So again, you're just going to get into your, into your slight bent knee position. And the only thing, again, that's going to move are your arms like this. Swing back and then up and land on the box, okay? And then you do it on the other leg. For these single leg box jumps, you want to do a total of 15 per leg. That's the max that you want to do. If you're uncomfortable jumping up onto something, then you can just do a, like a, a, just a single leg hop like that and just start working with that until you feel comfortable and then move on to doing the box. You can do it like that, okay? That's the single leg box. And as I said, a total of 15 per leg. So between both legs, 30 foot contacts. The next two exercises I'm gonna show you are lateral exercises, lateral jumps. So let me uh, just tilt this thing up over here for a second. Before we get to those lateral jumps, we're going to, we'll just use this milk crate and I'll just show you a single leg jump up onto the milk crate, which is, this is about, as I said, this is about 12 inches. So this is a much bigger jump. You get yourself set up, hands up, swing back, and I'm just demonstrating that box is probably a little too high for me for, uh, do, for doing a single leg uh, jump right now. Let's try it on the other leg. So that one was better, but still probably a little too high. The five inches is probably a little low. I'm probably maybe eight inches would be a good height for me on the single leg. So, you know, if you try something and it feels too big, then drop down. There's nothing wrong in dropping down and building up slowly. The worst thing that you want to have happen is that you hurt yourself because you're trying to jump onto something that's too big. Okay, so now we have two lateral jumps to do. We have a lateral bound, single leg lateral bound to you're jumping from the left foot to right foot here and then right foot to left foot. The key here is that you're sticking the landing and holding it for a second or two. So let me demonstrate. So I'm sticking the landing and actually, you know, that one I didn't, I wasn't able to hold. So you want to make your jump just big enough so that you're able to hold it like I was there, right? And go back, and I was able to do that one. That one was, so it's like a combination of how aggressively you push off that will, and how, and how far you try to jump that will sort of dictate how well you land. And you do like that. And what you're doing is you want to do up to five per leg. So again, the total here would be 30. So if I'm doing a set, I would count one, two, three, four, five. So let's say I'm gonna do a set of six here. That's three per leg. I would go one, two, three, four, five, oh, six, like that. So that's six, and you would do the, you don't want to do more than three sets. So you'd be doing three sets of six of that, and now it'd be 18 foot contacts there for the lateral bound. So that was the lateral bound. It's a single leg movement as well. But this single leg movement is meant to jump onto a box. 
So I have my five inch box here again. This was going to be a good height for a lot of people. This one, you're not going to want a big box. So you're jumping here. Let me move this back a little bit. So there's two ways that you're going to jump. So I'm going to demonstrate on my left foot and then I'm going to go to my right foot. So you're going to jump. I'm on my left foot. I'm going to jump to my left. This is a lateral jump like that. So that's a lateral jump. Let me show you again. So I'm on my left foot and I'm jumping to the left. Okay. That's a lateral jump. There's also a medial jump. So this I'll demonstrate with my right foot. So I'm on my right foot, but I'm jumping to my left again. So, and this is a medial jump. Let me show you that again. The medial jump again, you get everything set up and you jump onto the platform, onto the box. So when you're doing this single leg lateral box jump, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do three, you're gonna do six reps per leg. That's per set, six reps per leg. And three of them are going to be to the lateral and three of them are going to be to the medial. So I'm going to demonstrate with my left leg here. So I got one, oh, <laughs> that was a bad one. Two, step down, three, okay. And then I'm going to move the box over here so I keep facing forward. And then I have three, two to the right. So, or to the medial. So one, two, three. So you would do that with both legs. Three to the left, three to the right on the left leg and three to the left and three to the right on the right leg. Lateral and medial. I like the left and right. It's easier for me to keep track of. And then you would do three sets of those. And that would be 18 foot contacts per leg. I just want to say again that you want to take your jumping power drills slowly. They're an important aspect of your training but you don't want to overdo it. I will say that just doing the box jumps while filming this video, I can definitely feel the impact that it has on my legs. After this, I'll be taking, I'll be putting on my compression socks to help force the blood out of my legs so that when I take them on, healthy blood will flow back into it and it'll be good. So, and, and then they'll, they'll recover faster. So don't overdo it on the box jumps. Again, 100 foot contacts per week. So even if you're landing, that's one foot contact, right? And then this is a foot contact, and that's a foot contact. 100 of those a week. So just keep that in mind, and you don't want to do huge sets of these. Start off slow, and gradually build up three weeks in a row of doing these jumps and then you can move to the next level of jumps after that if you have any questions please let me know and again thanks for watching the video